Hey everyone, welcome to Pie's Kitchen. Today is an exciting day. We are making a recipe that I've been wanting to do for a long time, laksa. So laksa is a type of noodle soup that's common in Malaysia and Singapore. There are many, many different varieties of laksa, but the one I'm making is the one common in Singapore. And I was there a couple of years ago. I tried it, fell in love with it. It's a rich coconutty, aromatic seafood-based broth, and it's not that hard. It is a bit of work, I'm not gonna lie, but it's so worth every minute. And if you want to suggest a different kind of laksa that you want me to make, let me know in the comments. All right, let's get started. All right, let's first make the curry paste. Now you can buy laksa curry paste at the grocery store, which is perfectly fine if you're in a rush, you want a quick dinner. But you know me, I always want to show you how to make it from scratch if possible. So I'm going to start out with some dry chili. So this is just for color, so they're mild dry chilies. And then I'm also going to add some dried shrimp, and this is what makes a laksa paste very unique. I mean, this is like shrimp jerky. It's such an like umami bomb. And I always do my dry stuff separately in a coffee grinder because I find it's more effective, get them more fine than just throw it in in a big blender. Ta-da! Mmm, it's like spicy shrimp floss. A lot of people will add candle nuts, okay? I don't have candle nuts here, so a good substitute is macadamia nuts. What it does is it acts like a thickener and it adds a bit of a richness to it because macadamia nuts and, and candle nuts are very fatty. Cashews will also work. If you don't have it though, I find that for this recipe, it's totally fine. I just wanted to bring it up and show you. There you go and the oil is going to come out like you can see this just got a little bit wet and sticky. That's exactly what we want. So I've just switched my weapon to my handy dandy immersion blender here. I'm going to blitz some herbs. So I have some lemongrass, some galangal, some turmeric, which by the way, you don't have to peel as long as you scrub and clean the outside really well, and some chilies, which you can add as much or as little of as you like. So all of that is going into the blender. And of course, as for any curry paste that I've ever made, you're gonna need some garlic and some shallots, all right? And it wouldn't be laksa if we didn't add any shrimp paste. And yes, this is more shrimp paste than I normally add because I really want that flavor to come through. I'm even using the Malaysian kind of shrimp paste just to stick with the theme. You can use the Thai one. It's almost the same thing, but it's a good opportunity for me to show you um, a different kind of shrimp paste that you might be able to find at the store. And it'll say Bella Chan, then it comes in a block like this and you just slice it off. Plop that in. Now, if you're using a jug blender, you probably need to add a little more liquid to, to get the blades going. But if I'm using an immersion blender like this, I don't need to add any liquid at all, which is why I love it so much. Alrighty, when that's nice and fine, I'm gonna go in with my dry stuff. And at this point, you're just blitzing to mix. And that's it. One of the most important things in making a good laksa is that your base stock is delicious. So it's usually a seafood stock. So I'm gonna do mine with shrimp and clams today. So what I've got here is some shrimp stock. So I've made shrimp stock before, but briefly you wanna start out with shrimp that's head on and shell on. So much flavors in the head, so the heads are very important. So then you wanna just peel it and devein it. And if you haven't seen my magic deveining trick, Check out this video, it changes your life. And then you wanna just saute it and then all the good stuff, the fatty stuff from the heads will start to come out and it'll start to brown and stick to the bottom of the pot. It will smell like barbecue shrimp. Go in with five cups of water, scrape off all the bits off the bottom and then let it simmer gently for about 45 minutes. This is what we have and you should end up with about four cups of shrimp stock. We're just gonna fish out all of these shells here. And so now I'm going to fortify this stock with some clams. So in Singapore, one of the most common things they add in their laksa is cockles. I don't have cockles here, um, but clams are widely available and I love the flavor, the briny juiciness that clams give to this broth. Ah, so good. So I'm just gonna cook my clams in this shrimp stock here and they should take one to two minutes only. Make sure you close the lid. Turn the heat on high and get ready to savor delicious clammy shrimpy stock. Let's see. Woohoo! They're all open. Turn the heat off and I'm just gonna fish the clams out and we'll save these for when we're ready to eat. So we are now going to make the actual laksa broth. So I'm just gonna start by sauteing the curry paste just in a little bit of oil and then in goes this wonderful laksa paste. Yeah. 
and see when you've got less liquid in the paste, it'll actually take you less time to saute it because you've got less water to evaporate. All right, so I've given this a few minutes for the spices and the herbs to sort of fry in the oil. And I see now the oil is sort of like seeping out and sizzling around the paste. So now I'm gonna go in with some coconut milk. Ooh. Oh yeah. When you add the coconut milk, that's when you see the turmeric showing up as this beautiful golden color. Follow that by our wonderful shrimp clam stock. All of that in. Oh yeah. And at this point, I'm just gonna let this simmer for about at least 10 minutes to allow all the herbs and everything to infuse into the liquid around it. So we'll be right back. Alrighty, so it's had some time to simmer and you'll notice the color even changing a little bit. The yellow becomes a little more intense. Now, because there isn't enough seafood products in here already, we are gonna add some fish sauce to season. To balance out the saltiness, I'm also gonna add some sugar. You definitely wanna taste and adjust the seasoning, okay? Mm. Oh, it's good. Seasoning is spot on. Mm. All right, time to assemble. So this is the part that when it comes to, I think, any noodle soup, this is a bit of work. It's getting all the little things ready for your laksa, but it's worth it. So let's take a look. So in Singapore, they like to use these round, fat rice noodles. And the unique part about what they do there is they cut them up into these little pieces so that when you eat it, you only need a spoon. I was thoroughly confused when I was in Singapore and it came and there was just the one single spoon. And I was like, how are you supposed to eat this? And then I realized that everything's cut up for you. Brilliant. Obviously, if you want to stick with the long noodles, you're welcome to do that. And by the way, this is the, the noodles that I use. And so what I did is I soaked them in hot tap water for about 30 minutes until it's completely soft and pliable. I chop them up to make them short and then I just boil them for about two to three minutes until they're cooked but still kind of chewy and al dente in the middle just a little bit. Then I dunk them in cold water right away to make sure they stop cooking. I drain them and then there you have the noodles right here. And you can actually make these far in advance, keep them in the fridge and bring them out whenever you're ready to eat. And as far as proteins go, we've got the clams we cooked earlier, we've got the shrimp whose shells we've already used, and then fish cakes. So fish cakes you can get at a Chinese grocery store at the seafood counter or in the refrigerated section. And I just slice them up into little pieces here. I cut them into triangles because I think they look cooler that way. They're so good and so iconic in Laksa. You gotta have these. And so the ones that I buy come in like this block right here. Okay, and then you just have to slice it up. Final must have, must have is tofu puffs. If you've never had tofu puffs, be prepared. These are like magical broth sponge. So these are basically tofu that's been fried so that they puff up so that the, the inside is basically like a sponge and you let this soak the broth and when you eat it, it like squirts out delicious broth into your mouth and then becomes kind of chewy. It's so good. And as far as vegetables go, classic bean sprouts, standard noodle soup vegetables. Let's assemble. So I'm gonna bring this broth to a boil. First order of business, I gotta put my tofu puffs into this broth. And you wanna do this first because you wanna give the tofu, tofu puffs time to absorb all that goodness. Next, I'm gonna deal with my noodles. I'm gonna just reheat them right in the broth. And I'll also add my bean sprouts into this basket here. Quick 15 seconds dunk just to heat everything up. My bean sprouts are a little too high, but that's okay because Bean sprouts will get doused in the broth later anyway. Now, I want to stress that I'm only heating the noodles in the broth. I'm not cooking the noodles in the broth. You never want to actually cook raw noodles in your final broth because the starches will come out and gum up your broth, okay? Whee! Now I'm going to add my shrimp in the basket, some shrimp cakes, not I mean shrimp cakes, fish cakes, as much as you want. The beauty of this is the more shrimp you cook, the more flavorful this broth becomes. So when your shrimp is done, on your way out, make sure you fish out a couple of tofu puffs on the way out. There you go. Whee! I'm gonna turn this down for a second here. We don't need it boiling anymore. Pour some broth on to my soup. Yes. Ah, oh, that looks so good. Our clams, which I didn't wanna 
cook again because they'll just heat up with the with the rest of the broth. Also, if you want to do it real Singaporean style, you just take the clams right out and add it to your to your bowl. Then you really just need a spoon. Now as a final garnish, laksa always gets topped with a sprinkling of laksa leaves, which is also known as Vietnamese coriander, or for those of you who are Thai, man kư pak preo ha. So I can't find laksa leaf, not every day. Sometimes I can find it, sometimes they don't have it. But I have discovered that a good substitute is a combination of Thai basil and mint. Like laksa leaves has a sort of very floral but very cooling flavor. So I think the combination of these two herbs work well. If you can find laksa leaves, try it. It's a really interesting flavor. So I've just got the two chopped up here and I'm just gonna do a final drizzle. Oh yes, give this a final stir and you are laughing. Come here my little tofu puff. Mm. Oh, there's nothing like it. Fish cake. Mm. That flavor is out of this world. Ah, oh, it's so good. And I forgot to mention that in Singapore, they always serve a little bit of extra sambal, so, which is a like a spicy chili paste on the side for those of you who want extra spiciness. So you can definitely do that if you want, but this is perfectly spicy for me. Ah, I hope you give this a try. It's so good. It brings me right back to Singapore, a place I really want to go again. It is a bit of work gathering ingredients, but once you have it, you spread out the work, make the broth in advance, and cook the noodles in advance, the assembly is really quite quick. So I hope you give this a try. The recipe, as always, will be on pieskitchen.com. And when you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Oh, also, if you want to suggest other types of laksa that you want me to make, suggest them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an episode. And click that little bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure.